Sheldon, uh, there's often a lot of white noise around this team. Uh, you guys always try to tune it out, you say, but there doesn't seem to be that much uh, to worry about. You seem to have silenced the critics. So are you happy with where your team is? That, uh... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not too focused on anything that's happening outside of our room. I think that's been the main thing. It's a big reason why I think we found our way out of, you know, uh, the situation early in the season when things weren't going our way. That's the key for us is just to uh, focus on every single day and no matter what we're going through as a team, we're looking to go 1-0 and each day. You know, that's that's our focus. So uh, we've got a really good team coming in here again today that's got every every bit of confidence uh, in, in themselves as we do. Uh, so not unlike our game against Nashville the other day where we had to really be prepared for a good, confident opponent. We're in the same situation today. So we're just focusing on that. And I think that's been um, the nicest thing is that each day our team just come in and sort of renewed its process. Yesterday's practice, you know, we still chatted about some of the things that we, you know, we could have done better uh, in the Nashville game. You know, we talk about a lot of the things that we do well and we want to make sure we repeat them, but we're, we're still cleaning up areas of our game. So, you know, we're... we're we're doing. Uh, we're just staying focused on the, the day, daily process, so that we're not getting caught up in what's happening, or you know, are we on a roll? Are we succeeding? Are we, you know, are we struggling? Whatever it is, it's just what can we do today to improve? So that helps us remain focused. How's Andre doing this morning? Is he good today? Yeah, he'll be a game time decision tonight. We'll have Semyon off and warm up, but he, you know, he, it was a positive skate for him out there. We'll just make sure that he continues to be comfortable through the day. Austin has been such a prolific scorer, especially in even strength over his career. Why do you think the production hasn't been there five on five early uh, this season? Crossbars and posts seem to be getting in his way a little bit. Um, those kind of things. But the, the, the chance generation has been there. He's generating lots of shots. You know, so it's. I'm not concerned about it. I think if teams are going to continue to give him those types of looks or he's going to find ways to generate those looks himself or his line mates are helping him. Those are going to go in and going to go in a lot. So, you know, we're we're not concerned about that. Uh, I find that Austin's found a real nice level of consistency in his game here on both sides of the puck. Um, yeah, in, you know, last season he was a dominant defensive player. We, you know, we tend to forget about that, you know, after leading the league in goals and, you know, he's, the capability he has offensively, you lose sight of the fact that he was a dominant defensive player for us. And uh, we think that, helps the offensive side for him as well. And I think now that he's had a good string of games under him after missing camp and, and preseason, that that balance has really been there and it's just a matter of time before he starts filling it again. You know Jack's really hot right now. Are you a little worried at all about overusing him early in the season? Or conscious of it, you know. Uh, but he, he's been really good. And... Obviously, not just his play. I'm talking about daily. You know, I think that the way we've managed him in practice has helped that. Um, also, look at you know, sometimes the team in itself in the games can can help his workload. You know, I look at the game in Nashville the other night. I mean, we go into third period, we're protecting a one goal lead, and we've given up. I think it was three shots in the first 17 minutes of the third. Those kind of things really go a long way as well to helping that workload. So. Um, I think he's managed it very well. I think he's become very comfortable with his body and where, where he needs to go to manage it. Um, obviously, the medical team, now that he's been here for the you know, last season, of his first full season with us, they've got a real good handle on him. You know, he's, in terms of uh, energy levels, I think he's in a really good place. You know, the injury stuff, injuries happen, unfortunately, throughout the season for all players, and you don't never know when they're going to pop up you do all that you can to manage it and I think our, our team's done a real good job of helping Jack with that. Back back this weekend, so you know what you're going to do there or do you stick to the yeah, yeah we'll take it we'll take it a, a day at a time see how it goes both tonight and uh, and in Pittsburgh or against Pittsburgh. As you've gone through this stretch where you've sort of rotated guys in and out on the back end what's allowed Rasmus Sandin to keep his spot in the lineup? Well he's starting he's not one game the other night in, in Buffalo um, but uh, he's He's a guy that's come in and has consistently, you know, moved the puck very efficiently coming out of our zone um, and helps us in the offensive blue line. You know, those are that and the fact that he helps us in the second unit power plays. He's got some things that are pretty unique to him that he brings to our group. 
Uh, so that helps his cause for sure. Uh, so I guess that would be the biggest thing. Uh, you know, we have to continue to be mindful that it is a long season. It's a lot for a young player that hasn't played a lot in this league and hasn't played a lot in pro hockey, really, and has had a history of injuries here in, in the early going. That's part of why we gave him the night off in, in Buffalo the other night. Is just want to be smart about it. I think he might have played 10 regular season games, I think, last year, nine in the NHL, one in the American League, and obviously already played well, well, uh, well above that. So... We want to be smart with both he and, and Lilligren in that regard. Lilligren only played 20 games last season, has his own history of injuries. So um, we got to be mindful of that as we continue to develop these young guys and the fact that with Dermott and Hall and, and you know those guys have obviously been in and out as well, uh, we, we've developed the fact that, developed confidence the fact that we have seven guys. And we don't always make the decision for somebody to come out based on anything that's happening on the ice. It's trying to look at things, uh, you know, with a larger scope. Having said that on San Diego, Sheldon, how close is he becoming a guy that just doesn't come out anymore, like your top three? Well, I, I think it's hard to say because, like, because of the things I just mentioned. You know, I think it, you're going to, you, you don't, you, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying is that, you know, it's not, it's not about his play. It's about, it's about helping him stay healthy. It's about helping him maintain his level of play over the course of a long season. And, and also the fact that we do want to maintain seven defensemen and keep everybody involved. So you're, you're looking at these things, and it gives us um, you know, the greater freedom to be able to do that. And the team has shown that when we move people in and out, that it, it can, can, can find its way to, to success. And I think that speaks to the depth of our group, uh, speaks to the confidence of our team, no matter who's in or out. And that allows us to be able to manage things a little bit better that way as we look at in particular, our younger players. This also creates a little bit of competition among them to be better and keep Yeah, of course. That's very healthy. You know, that's something that we want, even on the forward end of it. You know, when, with the Mrazic uh, injury that's given us a little bit extra cap flexibility with him on LTI, and and uh, whether it was Anderson who was here practicing with us and did a really good job there, or Semyonov that's come up. On forward, you got a little bit of that for the very first time. We didn't have a lot of that early in the season. And uh, on defense, you know, that's, we've, we've created that here now with Hall sitting games and giving Lilligren an opportunity, and he's done terrific with it. Uh, he's going to get himself back in here soon. And uh, that's a very healthy thing for our team. And, and the Marlies are doing a lot of good things there too, so we've got a lot of hungry guys that are competing for spots. Do you think it's lit a fire a little bit under Travis? I mean, uh, last game I think he drew a couple of penalties and seemed to play pretty well. I think, yeah, I think Travis knows the situation he's in. We've been very upfront uh, with him, both in our discussion and obviously the fact that he's come out of the lineup. That in itself, uh, you know, can tell you where you're at and how you're looking to solidify yourself into one of those spots. And to, you know, uh, to Terry's question earlier, that just guys that are, you know, no doubters that are going to stay in every day. Uh, that's what, you know, guys are looking to, to do. Um, Derms has been here a lot longer than the other guys and, and has, ye, has yet to do that. But I think, you know, I look at the other night as an example that he did come in and do a good job for us, and that needs to continue to, you know, as he ramps that up, and then he's got the whole thing where he's got some young guys that are really pushing him, you know, and really fighting for those spots. And so whether it's Dermot or whether you're Justin Hall or whether you're one of our more established guys like Buzz Brody and, and Morgan, you know, you, you've – got to be at your best every day because we've we do have seven people um and as i mentioned people that are pushing down with the marlies as well that i want to play what has made uh, kerfoot effective of late he just uh he's just doing his job he's just coming every day and you know he's uh he's a, become a very low maintenance player for us you know the guy that we can re really rely upon no matter what i've asked him to do center wing Top six, bottom six, penalty kill. We haven't used him on the power play this season, but he's a guy that can help us there as well. Uh, we've spread out the minutes a little bit differently, but he's just been really consistent. He's made some some big plays for us very quietly. He made some big plays for us. You know, so you, th you think about some of the some of the big goals that we've scored here in the last uh, little stretch. You know, whether we get an insurance goal in Philadelphia, we get the game winning goal the other night in Buffalo, we get the uh, game tying goal against Calgary. You know, those are all coming off the stick of Kerf, making a seam pass and, and, and setting up the, those plays. 
Um, the other night, he's you know he's in, he's involved in the four check on, on the uh, uh, the calf goal. You know he's finding ways to contribute uh, consistently uh, at five on five, and he's been a huge part of our penalty killing that's been rolling. So he's just doing uh, doing a lot of little things very well for us. We've talked a lot about camp and cash, but Kerf uh, has been really solid for us. Really, really since the beginning of the season, say for a few games early on. I was moving him around uh, quite a bit, but it's been pretty consistent in the fact that he's played a lot of wing of late and really been happy with him.